You're listening to Discutavel podcast, your green audio about gardening, the outdoors and sustainability. Hello, there you are again, and I'm here as well. Welcome. This is episode 171 of Discutavel podcast, your own green audio broadcasted from the Netherlands. This episode has been released on the 2nd of May 2024. And as usual, you hear my voice, the voice of Yvonne Smit. You may remember that in episode 169 we visited the tropical house and the cactus house of the Inverness Botanic Gardens. But there's more to see there. So, we will continue our visit in this podcast. Please listen to the second and last part of our Disco coverage from Inverness. And this time, we explore a few gardens that can be inspiring for gardeners in northern Great Britain. As it happens, the so-called quiet corner in the gardens is not so quiet after all. So we stroll around a medicinal garden. I'm investigating a big bug hotel and a multifunctional hedgerow. And a weather talk was very appropriate on that sunny spring day in May 2023. Disco coverage. I'm leaving the pavement now onto paths with wood chips, just exploring a few of the gardens which can function for you as an inspiration for your garden back home, especially when you live here in the northern parts of Great Britain. Here's a lovely border with aphorbias. Um, Then the lions, Narcissus, and Vinca Minor, it's called in Latin. Don't know the English name, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. They're all standing at the foot of a magnolia tree. It's just beginning to flower. towards the garden where the gentleman is working at the wall explaining to visitors what he's what his project is about it's not a big garden these botanical gardens I think you can stroll around here for an hour or so just relax I'm supposed to be at the quiet corner. The sign says here, this is number 17, the quiet corner. But you might hear the man in the background working at the wall. So I think it's better to walk onwards and look for some solitude and quietness. This is the Grow Project. Happy plants, healthy soil busy people, nature therapy, vegetable production, wildlife gardening, reuse, reduce, recycle. Not sure whether I may go through the gate. I suppose so, because it's open. 
Welcome to Wonder, it says. Yes, we are. Oh, it's a totally different part of the gardens. I'm greeted by a statue of a deer. There's a sign I should go to the left, so that's what I'm going to do. Small path. Fence on the left-hand side with the Buck Hotel. And borders on the right-hand side. And I see people gardening indeed. This is really a working place, I can see that. I see all kinds of equipment here. Plants to buy. Some onion type, I suppose. And believe it or not, but the sun is shining in Scotland today. Good morning, gentlemen. One of the workers here is filling up the pond in the butterfly garden. And this uh, part of the garden produces, the cont uh, contains plants that produce uh, nectar-rich flowers, which attract butterflies. Two beautiful, naturally like, um, naturally looking ponds. And a pigeon comes flying here, sitting on the fence, likes it as well. As I'm standing here, I see we're at the borders of the botanical garden, because on the other side of the fence is one of the big activity centers, uh, sporting areas in this in this uh, district of town. It's only a small walk to the other side of this part of the garden where I can see other big, big sporting areas on the other side of the fence and a border. One or two tulips so beautifully flowering at the moment, deep purple f color and an orange one as well. They're spread around. They're not have been planted in clumps apparently. Good morning, ma'am. It's. It, am I really in Scotland? It, am I really in Scotland today with all that sunshine? No. <laughs> so you're enjoying it too, doggy. Yes, you're enjoying the sunshine. She doesn't like the heat too much, um, so we'll get her back home. Where are you from? From the Netherlands. Yes, from the Netherlands. Well, you get your fair share of rain too. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I suppose we even had perhaps a little bit more rain than you because I read in the papers the other day that you, you could have a water shortage this summer. Yes, it happens every summer to be honest. Usually it's the southeast of England and that area that gets Enjoy your walk. You too. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Alongside the hedge I reach a lawn. Big bug hotel built like a small house. Two people on their knees with big black buckets looking for something, perhaps weeding. Yes, they take out the weeds, I see. And this must be part of the vegetable garden with 
cabbage is being protected by netting. Some fruit bushes. A herb garden and a netted area full of fruit bushes protected against the birds I suppose. And further on I see the medicinal border with herber herbaceous um, wild and cultivated hardy perennials and they have um, medicinal properties. I don't know what the Ayuga reptans bugle is uh, used for, but it's a native plant, as they say on the on the sign. I also see here Verbascum, Pericum, St. John's Worth in, in English, also a native. Corian mint, or Argestache rugosa, probably all known to you. Like the uh, Salvia officinalis, the common sage, which comes from the Mediterranean. And one of my favorites in the in the garden, Levisticum officinalis, called Lovage in English. It's um, more more than knee length at the moment here in the botanical gardens in Inverness looking fresh, freshly green. Saturaya Montana, also here in the medicinal border. It's called winter savory in English. It covers the ground like a carpet and it has very nice smelling Mmm, nice smelling leaves, small leaves. And a very small Sambucus nigra or elderberry here also. I think this border is very, can give you lots of ideas on native or non native plants, which uh, are used in medicine. Of course, you have to take care using it yourself in for medicinal purposes. But they usually have um, nice smelling leaves and they look pretty. <laughs> so, why not try? And at the end of the lane here I see the popular lemon balm or Melissa officinalis used for teas, for example. I have various of these plants back home and as you might know I also have hens back home and in summertime when I have lots of lemon balm leaves or oregano leaves I dry them, I um, crunch them so that they are very um, small and I throw these scattered leaves in the coop of the chickens and in their nesting boxes. It smells nice for me. I hope it's smelling nice for the chickens as well. And perhaps they will um, say to uh, insects which you don't want to have in the coop that they don't want to go there because they don't like the smell. But I have no scientific proof that this works. I do have scientific proof that it works for me, though. There's a long hedgerow here which makes the division between two parts of the vegetable garden 
Um, the mixed species here is they are a valuable alternative to fencing. They act as a windbreak, a barrier, and a wildlife habitat. It's better suited to an informal garden. All the species planted here are native. They include duck rose, holly, hawthorn, blackthorn, beech, hazel, field maple, hornbeam, elder, elm, guelder rose, bramble, and ivy. And when I look at this hedge, it's not only very uh, effective in dividing uh, parts of the garden, uh, perhaps noise cancelling as well, but it's also looking very pretty because all those variety in uh, leaf forms and colors are nice to see. When I visit Great Britain, it always occurs to me that lots of gardens are fenced, they have fences around them. Perhaps it's um, not possible to change that for the people who live there, but I do wish that would be more possible because hedges are well, pretty to, to, to look at and much, much better for an eco-friendly garden. Of course, maintaining a hedgerow is something completely different than maintaining a fence. The base of the hedge should not be cut too vigorously, but allowed to grow wild since the vegetation at the base supports a lot of animal life. And hedge trimming is best done in late winter after berries are gone. Earlier cutting disturbs nesting birds and removes fruit on which the birds feed. If early winter is not possible, then September is an alternative. Well, this is the conclusion of my walk in the gardens of the Inverness Botanic Gardens and I end my visit on the terrace of the cafe here and quite in contradiction to what all people think, the sun is shining, a light breeze, it's a beautiful spring day, white clouds but also lots of blue in the sky, perfect day and a good visit to this botanic gardens. I can recommend it when you are here for one or two days in Inverness and um, I think you can allow about half a day for the visit to these gardens. When you stay in the center of town it's possible to was possible to walk to the gardens and it's a nice walk too because there are several city parks alongside the river here and they are beautifully displayed with plants with big trees um, you can have a break at the river bank but you can also make the choice to go by bus from a bus stand near the bus station in the city center As I said before, I'll publish some photographs and more information on the Botanic Gardens of Inverness in the show note, which accompanies this episode of Iskatafel podcast. And I hope you have the time, some time, to go and visit the gardens too. Disco finish.
Thanks for listening again. I hope you enjoyed our disco coverage of Inter- Inverness Botanic Gardens. I would like to send much more nice spring weather like the weather we experienced during our visit to all the people who work at these gardens and who make it such a beautiful place. As usual, you will find more information in the show notes on discotafel.nl and if you have any questions or suggestions about our podcast, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can find us on discotafel.nl and on X and Blue Sky. Next episodes will be in Dutch again, but please stay with us as we expect to publish some nice audio recorded at the charming RHS flower show Tatum Park, which is near Manchester in England. And you might remember the interviews I had there with the experts about bugs in the garden and about gardening in small spaces. We released these episodes, these interviews in August 2023, And of course, you can still catch up with them. The upcoming Tatum Park episode has not yet been planned, but should reach your ears in about June 2024. In the meantime, let's go outside. And until next time, 